And he wrote this intro himself, didn't he? It's Rahi. <laughs> Um, we're here in Guildhall, Jimmy Carr has performed here, Paloma Faith has performed here, that's it. Um, and we've got a great show for you tonight, full of stand-up and improv, um, and it's all for a good cause. This is for Red Nose Day. Uh, until recently, I always thought that Red Nose Day was the day when I picked the wrong time of the month to go down with my girlfriend. <laughs> I'm joking, I don't have a girlfriend. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, um, let's not forget, Comic Relief, it's, it's a great charity. Um, we're, we're doing this for one reason, I'll put my red nose on. Uh, one reason, oh, no, that works. Uh, one reason alone, and that's to make sure Lenny Henry has a job every two years. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, look at this. We've got lighting, we've got a sound technician, classic sound technician, glasses and the beards. I wouldn't have it any other way. We've got a bar in the back, uh, which no one is going to use because the drinks are way too expensive. Boo! Yeah, we <laughs> uh, and we have got a cameraman. Uh, I, I can't do the poses and the, the shots on the front page. Uh, like this. Have you got that? No, you haven't. Oh, never mind. I'm not stalling. Um, I do have material. Uh, Okay, I, I'll level with you. I haven't got fucking anything. I've got no material. Um, as with anything or everything I've ever done in my entire life, I've left this to the last minute and haven't prepared anything. <sighs> Awkward. Uh, so, sex. Sex is good. Uh, I partake in regular sexual activity. I always, I always play it safe and make sure I use protection, which is why I fully, fully recommend not an antivirus. Uh, what else could I do? I could sing. I could sing, but I won't. Uh, puppets. That's it. I'm a ventriloquist act. Um, I brought along a very special visitor for you guys here tonight. He's uh, he's just he's behind this stage. I'll get him. Just wait one second. He's a bit shy. Come on, don't be shy. Not him. Here he is. <laughs> Meet uh, Steve, the puppet. Hi, Steve. Hello, Tia. So, what are you going to do for us today, Steve? Anyway, uh, that's. About it, um, I mean, I, I, I fail at everything I pretty much do. I just finished my film project. Um, it was a James Bond movie, and it uh, basically looked at James Bond's life when he was a student, when he was like us. Uh, and it involved him getting into all sorts of mischief, you know, going to lectures in his Aston Martin, getting to clubs using his provisional license to kill, <laughs> playing the evil villain in a deadly game of Ring of Fire, and then downing the dirty pint, shaken, not stirred. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I, I do film studies. Uh, anyone do film studies? Awesome. <laughs> and you're ironic actually filming me. You must be a very dedicated student. <laughs> or just someone who's got nothing better to do. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Um, I'm a huge science fiction fan. Uh, I, 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 the thing about science fiction is I look at the technology, like robots and laser guns, and I just think, why can't our technology be like that? All we've got is iPhones and, and, and just anything that we can do with eye. I, what, can you imagine if like, sci-fi films had the technology that we did? How boring would that be? <coughs> E.T. would be like a five minute movie. Surely all he needed to do to get home is use a sat-nav. I mean, it would take him around the sun a few times through an asteroid field, but he would have got there eventually. And that famous iconic ending scene where E.T. is being heartwarmingly torn apart from his new best friend. I'm gonna miss you, E.T. I'll be right here, 
or we could Skype. <laughs> My shoe's really uncomfortable. Ah, that's better. Ah, no, it's not. Oh well. Uh, there is Alien, uh, tagline for Alien, in space, no one can hear you scream. Whereas in reality it would be, in space, there is no Wi-Fi signal, and therefore no one will be able to read your status. <laughs> yeah, but the Alien just burst from my stomach, FML, OMG, unhappy base. <laughs> Terminator, I'll be back. Sorry, I mean, BRB, confused base. <laughs> The thing is about technology is everyone uses technology to do everything these days, except for the supermarket. Has anyone noticed this? When you go to the supermarket, it's like your phone doesn't exist. If you want to find someone, like if, if you're, you've lost someone in any other situation, you just send them a text, wouldn't you? Where are you? Question mark. Whereas in the supermarket, what everyone does to find someone they've lost is walk straight down the middle aisle and do this. <laughs> It never works. It never fucking works. You never find your friend. They're always outside of Morrison waiting for you. And then, once you finally found them, that's the moment that the text has already sent. Where are you? Question mark. But yeah, we've got a great show for you tonight, full of um, some really talented uh, acts. Um, so it's time to bring on the first of many. So please welcome. He's probably the most controversial comedian you will ever meet. So if you are offended, fuck you. It's Paul Jones. <laughs> Hi everyone. Are you having fun? This is probably one of the biggest audiences I've ever performed in front of, except for that time I had a wank in front of my computer and I forgot to turn my webcam off. The truth is, I only really turned up for that because I thought comic relief was an event where comedians get tossed up. And I'm glad so many of you turned up because there's going to be a lot to swallow. A, a lot of comedy to swallow. Uh, dirty mind. Um, something about the Comedy Society, it's a weird thing that only happens to us And um, if you tell someone you're in the Comedy Society, the first thing they say is, Tell us a joke! Go on! Go on, tell us a joke! I mean, does that happen in any other society? I mean, who here is in a different society? Name a society, anyone? Gaming! Oh, oh tell us a game! Tell us a game! Oh, oh, dude, what's a good game? What's a good game? No one says that. MMA, yeah. Oh, grapple me, grapple me, hold me! That just doesn't happen in any other society. I might just not tell you people that I'm in the Breast Inspection Society. Someone says to me, Oh, oh you're, what, you're in society? Yeah, uh, breast inspection. Oh, God, they're filming boobs. Like, it just doesn't work, does it? I mean, someone said to me the other day, um, Oh, you're looking really trim. I mean, you're looking really nice. I mean, it, it make, makes your dick look even bigger. And I said, Oh, that's really nice. Thanks, Mum. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Other people say to me, um, how do you stay so true? Like, what's your secret? And I, and I tell them, AIDS. <laughs> but the truth is, there is no secret. Um, it's just harder for people to stay active nowadays. I mean, internet pornography and computer gaming. I mean, it just makes people stay fairly inactive, apart from your thumbs and your wrist. That's playing the Wii, not one of <laughs> Dirty mind, all of you. Um, Oh yeah, um, people have been teaching me to play computer games recently. Um, I've got into online gaming a lot more. Um, people have been showing me the way to be less of a noob and more of a pro. That's a reference for you guys. Um, but, uh, where was I? Oh yeah, um, it's just weird to see how computer games give people such a sense of achievement um, that you don't really get in everyday life. I mean, you complete a level. Congratulations, you've completed a level. Oh, you have so many points, you're amazing. You don't really get that sort of thing in your everyday life. And I just think, if people did somehow, I mean, you'd stay a lot more active. You know, imagine to see a guy sitting in his sofa and you know, just doing nothing with his day. And thinks, you know, I'm going to go for a walk. So he you know, stands up of his chair. Excellent. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, oh, cool. So he goes to his door and opens the door and starts, starts going for a walk. So, you know, starts briskly walking down the road. <laughs> Cool, alright, let's go, I'm feeling good about this, yeah, I'm going for a jog, so let's jog it. Epic! Oh, oh, wow, oh, wow, oh, wow. Oh. So, yeah, so he breaks into a run, full of runs, starts sprinting in the high street. Dominating killing spree! I mean, if people would probably be a lot more active in their daily lives if you got recognition like that. Um, and the sort of people who've been introduced to these computer games, I was thinking, what life skills, what skills do I possess 
that I could teach to these people. Like, what well, they're teaching me something, what can I teach them? What would be useful? And I thought, mm, multiple orgasms. That's, that's probably a skill that most people would want to acquire. And the secret, really, is clitoris buckaroo. You've, you've basically got to not give up. Um, when a woman, when, when you're deep in the bushes of, of a lady garden, um, you've got to keep your tongue on that clitoris. And when she starts getting to the point of climax, she's going to want to kick you off. And if she can't kick you off, she's going to try and crush your skull with her thighs. <laughs> So you've got to resist both these things and just persevere and go. And you're going to get her to the top, to the pinnacle at this point, and you're going to keep going. And all, you know, if, you, if things are going well, your skull's still intact, you carry on. Not like that. It's just for a comic effect. But yeah. And, um, you know, she's screaming, she's screaming, she's screaming your name, she's screaming for God, she's screaming for Allah, Vishnu, my cousin, my dad. She wants everyone in the room suddenly. And afterwards, you know, you, you haven't given up, it's all gone well, you find you both knackered, you're covered in some sort of stuff. And she's knackered and red faced and exhausted. And she lays there, she's just laying there, she's just sort of like laying there like, oh. And she looks around at you and she looks lovingly into your eyes and she's, oh, she doesn't know what she's speechless. She looks at you and she says, DOMINATING! <laughs> Thank you, that's what I've got time for. Um, our next act is a wonderfully handsome and funny young man. It's Tom Appleton. <laughs> How is everyone? Your well? Yeah. I seem to have an erection all the time. I don't think I'll ever suffer from erectile dysfunction. Touch wood. I don't want to be too rude tonight. I was going to do a joke about fingering a girl, but I thought it might be a bit close to the knuckle. Some people think beekeeping is dangerous. I do it for the buzz. So let me tell you a bit about myself. I am an atheist. That's just the way God made me. I have multiple personalities disorder, and so do I. I broke up with my girlfriend recently. Uh, yeah, thanks. It was a mutual decision. We mutually agreed that she hates me. Before we broke up, we used to do a lot of role play. Uh, she used to play the role of someone who didn't want to have sex. Apparently Tesco's are employing lots of dwarves at the moment. Every little helps. I hate vegetarians who are too late. No, wait. I hate vegetarians who are hypocrites. I was talking to a vegetarian the other day who was wearing a turtleneck jumper. <laughs> so I see a few of you are drinking tonight, that's cool. I was actually an underage drinker. I used to drink seven up when I was five. <laughs> a couple of my mates actually went to hospital for binge drinking. I didn't even know hospitals sold alcohol. <laughs> Apparently alcoholism can be passed down through genetics. My therapist asked me if there was any alcohol in my genes. I was like, no, it's just piss. <laughs> Let me tell you about my dog. I've got a whip it when it misbehaves. I love having a dog because when I shit the bed, there's someone else to blame. <laughs> so I'm, I'm getting a bit old now. I actually found a grey hair in my pubes. I should probably shower after I fuck a pensioner. <laughs> I hate people who are too lazy to explain things. I was talking to a girl the other day who was wearing a chastity ring. I asked her to explain what a chastity ring was. She said she couldn't be fucked. Lazy. Well, thank you very much. That's all from me. Please put your hands together and welcome to the stage, Umby Winters. How many of you guys have described yourselves as charismatic? About none of you. <laughs> I can see a couple of people raising their hands. A charismatic person would whoop. 
Uh, I really wish I was more charismatic. I really do. And I told this to a friend. He said, Only don't worry, you're plenty charismatic. You're about three quarters charismatic. I wondered what that meant until he pointed out that three quarters of charismatic is just asthmatic. <laughs> I reckon I am a shy, awkward person. I reckon a large part of it comes from my time in secondary school. I spent a lot of time in secondary school getting punched. And I feel like it's affecting the way that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm around other people. Like, I have a very kind of Jekyll and Hyde relationship with people. Like, most of the time, people are fine. People are grand. People are wonderful. I can tolerate their existence. But some days, you just hate everyone. Like, some days I will be angry at someone because they've had the audacity to exist in the same room as me. I will be sitting, like, in a room with someone, and I'll just, like, in my mind, I'll just be going, God, why are you, why are you here? I fucking hate you. Why, why do you exist? I want you to leave. I hate you so much, I'm trying to will you out of existence. I've been told not to do that anymore, as it tends to take the romance out of cuddling. <laughs> Man, I, I, really thought, I, I really thought that coming to university would change me as a person. I thought that if you come to university, that's where you discover who you truly are. And if that is the case, then I'm a grumpy old man who hates fun. <laughs> like, let me tell you the kind of person. Okay, I feel bad for my roommates because I get mad at them for the loudness at which they play their music. Except I've realized recently it's not the loudness with which they play their music, it's the music that they play itself. I reckon, I have a theory, if they played music that I liked, I'd be fine with it. I remember a very specific example. A couple of, a couple of uh, months ago, they'd come back from a night out. Because, uh, of course, I hadn't been invited. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear a couple of awes there. Fuck off, this is my actual life. <laughs> Yeah, so they come back from a night out, they were singing outside my room really, really loudly, really, really obnoxiously. And this woke me up, and obviously I was mad, but of course I've got like one side of my brain, which is going, oh my god, I can't believe they would wake me up, why would they do this? I hate them, well, and they clearly hate me, otherwise they'd never do this, this is so inconsiderate of them, why would they do this, what have I done to them, well, why do they hate me so much? But the other side of my brain is going, ooh, but on the other hand, I do love Kesha. <laughs> Look at me, of course I fucking like Kesha. <laughs> Man, I'm the kind of, I, I, I'm such an old man. I bought a broom the other week. For this, a couple of people who know how this joke ends sitting the back there. I bought a broom the other week for the sole purpose of letting the guy upstairs know that when he's being too loud, I'm that guy. <laughs> but I, I came, I came to university from Portsmouth. I, I came from Newcastle. Has anyone been to Newcastle? Yeah, you all sound fucking miserable. That's what Newcastle does to people. Don't worry, you will know when you get there. We're the only place in the world that has more Greggs than we do McDonald's. <laughs> they're very clever of their Greggs up north because they've realised that they can happily pay all of their jewelry employees in pasties. Sausage roll is a retirement plan. Easy peasy. Oh, the situation up north is dire. I mean, not, nobody up north knows what a waitress even is. The old thing from there on Russia plays for Liverpool. <laughs> But you can't laugh at us, Portsmouth. You can't laugh because we may have many, many breaks, but we've got tens. <laughs> tens fried chicken. Oh my god! Someone explained that so well to me when I got down to Portsmouth. Someone I was eating tens, and someone said to me, Bobby, you know tens? Yeah? I don't reckon it is what it says. What do you mean? Well, you know how Portsmouth is a harbour town? Yeah? Do you notice how we don't have many seagulls? <laughs> um, but I tell you what, is um, I, I do love you, Portsmouth. I do love you simply for the things that I see out of my bedroom window. I live in halls at the moment. Any people in halls in here at the moment? Yeah? <laughs> I, I live in, I live in uh, Harry Law, which overlooks Guildhall Square and Guildhall Walk, and my room faces that way, so often on a night time I will hear a lot of uh, loud noises. Now, the story I'm about to tell you, I don't like offending people, I'm throwing it out there. I don't like causing offence. If you get offended by this story, I can only give you my sincerest apologies. With a bit of tension in the room now, don't worry, it's not that bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was uh, sitting in my room one night and I heard a couple of, uh, some, some shouting from outside my bedroom window and of course you brought it up because what if it's a fun story? And I went and had a look. I went and had a look and I couldn't quite see what was going on. I could hear two voices yelling. That's what I could hear, two voices yelling, but I couldn't quite see anything. The library was in the way 
Uh, and so I was almost, I almost just went and sat back down when all of a sudden a drunk dwarf with no legs comes streaming out from behind the building in a wheelchair past my field of vision and disappears behind another building. Now, that wouldn't be worth noting if it wasn't for the fact that tied to the back of this man's wheelchair was another wheelchair facing the opposite direction and empty. <laughs> Do you remember how I said I heard two voices yelling? <laughs> At a remarkable pace, considering the circumstances, comes another drunk like this boy speeding through my field of vision. And I didn't know what to make of this story, so I took it to my friend and I said, what do you think happened here? And he just fought for a second before going, it's clearly the greatest version of tug of war to have ever been. <laughs> Uh, let me ask you a question, okay? Uh, personal question, I'm expecting a mainly, main, a ma mainly male response, but how many of you guys pee in the shower? Yeah. Thank you, you freak. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good, it's actually good for the environment. Scientists have proved this. You pee in the shower, you don't have to use the toilet water, it saves water, saves the environment, it's all good. I can't do it. I've tried. <laughs> I have tried. I can't do it. My body refuses to do it. Maybe it thinks it's unnatural, maybe it thinks it's, it's just not right, but either way, I've tried. But I've come up with a solution. So next, so, so last time, I tried this solution. My solution was this. I thought, okay, my body's a, habit, a creature of habit. What I'll do is I'll start at the toilet, <laughs> begin, pinch off the flow, <laughs> What do to the shower of police and we're all good? That is the plan. Here's what happened. Start at the loo, you know, streams all going, we're all good. Pinch off the floor. Men, I know it hurts, we're all gonna make sacrifices. I begin the waddle over. That's when I sneeze. It was like a fire hose. Again and again and again, and I can spend hours cleaning that bathroom, but that bathroom is where we keep the guinea pigs. <laughs> you try explaining to your mum why nibbles won't go near his water bottle anymore. <laughs> what a disaster. Oh, my mum, like, bless my mum. I'm going to end here, I'm going to end now on this, on this little story, but bless my mum. She was so nervous about me coming off to university. She, we were packing boxes one night, one day, right before I left, and she took me aside and she said, I'm the, Look, you know I've been a nurse for a long time, right? Yeah. So I've just got some advice for you, okay? When you get down to Portsmouth, I know that the, that the temptation is going to be to have sex with anything that moves. I'm telling you, as your mum, don't. Now, my mum, like I said, is a nurse. She particularly works with very, very people my age. So uh, she's probably seen a lot, of, a lot of people throw their lives away from comedy, uh, from comedy, from pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same thing, really. <laughs> get fucked once, then you're addicted to the nine months. Uh, she, she, she's seen a lot of people throw their lives away from pregnancy, she's seen a lot of people get STDs, so I was like, oh, right, okay, so that's why I don't want me to have sex, right, because you don't need it to throw my life away because I've got a lot of potential, right, that's what you're getting at. No, I made a bet with your dad that you'll leave university a virgin. <laughs> now, he's given me good odds, but I just want to secure my chances in case you meet someone with no standards. <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to uh, be the end of the first block of comedy for the, uh, for the night. So what's going to happen now is uh, I need you guys to give me a big round of applause that way. Not for my own ego, but partially for my own ego. But also so that the other performers know that it's time to come back on. So please, can we have a big round of applause? One, two, three! <laughs> Get in here, you fucks! <laughs> oh, you're all, are you all there? Stay tight, stay tight. Um, so what's going to happen now is we are going to start playing some improvisational games, which is going to be a big laugh and fun for everyone. What we have here is we have Guy, Ian, Simon, and Zia. They're going to be playing a game. Don't leave! <laughs> We're getting to the good part! <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to start playing some improvisational games. Everyone, shut the fuck up! Focus on these guys! Uh, what's going to happen now is uh, what we're going to play is a game called Newscasters. It's a very, very simple game. These guys are going to be uh, your newscasters. They're going to be doing some weekly, nightly, evening news. But three of them are going to have strange twists. The only one that's going to be normal is uh, Guy here. 
a bit of a difference from normality, he is going to be the normal one. So, uh, what's going to happen is Dad's going to be doing news, he's going to have a co anchor, that's Saeed. We're going to go over to the sport with Ian and then over to the weather with Zia. But we need strange characteristics for Saeed, in, uh, Ian, and Zia. So, let us have, uh, let's have a characteristic for Saeed. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> What did you say? An irrational fear of auto cues. He's got an irrational fear of auto cues. <laughs> <laughs> well, it could be rational if you want. No, I think your rational is very good. Um, yeah, so you've got an irrational fear of the auto cue. Now, sports. We have Ian. Let's have a uh, trait of him. Hates sports. He hates sports. <laughs> we have a better one. <laughs> Strangely horny. <laughs> strangely, strangely horny because you hate sports. <laughs> let's go, let's combine. Ah, for the weather, we have Zia, our president, so make him suffer. Agoraphobia. Ag agoraphobia? Yeah. Can we have another better? Go obscure, go big, this is improv, anything can happen. <laughs> agoraphobia. <laughs> uh, so let's have arachnophobia, but you're also on a drug that makes you see spiders. Cool. So, okay, with that, with that, with uh, that, you guys are going to deliver the news, and I hope you enjoy, guys enjoy our improv games. Hi, and welcome to News at 10 with me, Guy Crick. Our main topic is that the Pope has now been decided. The smoke was white, and they've now chosen their Pope. What do you think of this? <laughs> We're so fast! Stop that! Stop it! Oh, you're so fast! It's, it's uh, so. Hello. Good evening. I'm Saeed. I'm here. What is the news? That the Pope has just been chosen. The Pope has just been chosen, and guess what? He's not black. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad, right? He's moving again. Just someone stop that. I think I'm going to look away. Um, hey, hey, bro, can you read it for me and tell me what to say? It says that um, the man has been called. The man has been called. <laughs> I love young boys. I love young boys. <laughs> and he's telling me to pass it to sports. Okay, back to spotty quaffle. And he's telling me to pass it to sports. Back to pass it to sports. Liverpool 1, Arsenal 0. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the match earlier on versus uh, Portsmouth versus Southampton. Fucking terrible game. It's terrible. Why is it so bad but it feels so good? <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> yeah, um, Newcastle uh, lost a game last night. It's uh, truly tragic. Uh, no one saw that coming. Uh, but uh, I know what is coming. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. Uh, uh, weather, take it away, take it away. Uh, 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 weather, um, okay, um, it's going to be uh, incredibly sunny in London, perfect for the premiere of the new Spider Man movie. Uh, um, uh, it's it's going to be uh, incredibly uh, rainy in Newcastle. Hey, let's get freaks! Um, and in Cornwall, it's just, they're all around me, they're all over me. Are you going to help me? Do you, please help me. Do you want to see if it's alright? It's coming. I know. You can see it as well. They just don't stop, do they? Don't stop. Don't stop. You're like, a bit excited about that. It, it, it rains yeah. with the gushes. <laughs> for, for, for more information. I think that's from our sports presenter. For more information on the web, stop. make sure you stop check the web. World Wide Web. Stop the web. Webs. I, I think Everywhere web. I think Everyone help me. I think that's something now. Please join us time where we will get an absolutely <laughs> normal people. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Yeah, alright. They're like a really left wing anarchist. Um, and 
I like that. Uh, this scene might go on a little bit longer than planned. <laughs> so yeah, so we have um, Weber. <laughs> yep. Come on. And what sports? Can't get enough of Alex Plumbridge. <laughs> no, you cannot. Take it away. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the news at 10. Our main headline tonight, weather has recently disrupted main travel with snowstorms blowing in across the prison. What are your thoughts? Blowing up. What? What? Blowing up? Blowing. No, uh, no, 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 weather, weather, oh, blowing across. Oh, oh. 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 <laughs> What'd you get blown for? <laughs> Feedback, please. <coughs> yes. Oh, white ash. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think I'll move on to the weather, please. Well, hello, thank you. Back in the studio, it was a great news report, and let's get the weather done fucking quickly. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in the north, it is going to be. <laughs> Oh, and the water is just going to be running down, <laughs> down the country, down, warm, running down, thinking of a lot of warmth, and it will be so good when it's fucking running down, down. Uh, sunny, yeah, it's going to be sunny in the southwest for about four minutes, and then it's going to rain again. <coughs> Um, here's a bit of advice, when it gets to the part where it rains, go outside, take the leak, and if it's heavy enough, no one knows. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, it will be snowing uh, in the Lake District, where there's tons of waterfalls. You can go for your break now, mate. Go on. Um, other news. Uh, there was a recent bee outbreak. They've, due to recent... Uh, I've got my headline now. Well done. Yes, bees. What did they do? Buzz. Are you at the house? No puns. Move on to sport, if you please. Hey, Alex. <laughs> sport, now. No, if you insist. England beat Canada in football of some sort, you know. Do you play football, Alex? Sport. I have a sport question. Do you play? <laughs> it's not for me, it's about the poor food I can it. As you wish. I can't resist your every come on. Do you get a lot of restraint order, for fuck's sake? The first one didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Just... So England beat Canada in some sort of football cup, which makes us slightly better than Canada, to be honest, which we were anyway. Did you know that, Alex? <laughs> he seems to really like you. <laughs> well, no shit. <laughs> Get back over there. <laughs> I can't resist you. And that won't stop me. <laughs> Unfortunately, the bees stop playing with lords. I don't understand how. It's only cricket. Do you play cricket? <laughs> no, stop asking me these questions. Why? I like to get to know you better. You're doing your job right now. I can multitask very well. <laughs> Apparently not. This just in, later on tonight we shall be expecting from their apartment golden showers. <laughs> Spoilers. Oh, I'm just lost in your eyes. You might want to do something now. Are you done with your report then? Probably. <laughs> <laughs>
Join us next time for news, where hopefully we'll have a more competent news team and someone will have remembered to take their bathroom break before they come to do the weather. Considering it rains a lot here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Okay, during their performance, another performer can shout freeze, at which point they will join them on stage and they can completely alter the scene based on the positions that the performers on stage are already in. Performers joining in can also tag uh, performers on stage out, uh, just to kind of make sure that there's not too many people on stage. So um, this, to start this off, we have Ambi and Alex. So, <coughs> can somebody please name a non <laughs> A non-sexual position for Andy. Standing on one leg. Yeah. Okay. That's the first time I've ever done that and okay. someone hasn't shouted out anal, but awesome. <laughs> uh, right, here we go. First bit of audience participation. Hello sir, what's your name? Alex. Could you please position Alex as you please? Now, you there in the front row, you are in the danger zone. <laughs> I will fall on you. <laughs> yeah, people in the front row, you are going to get wet at some point, okay? Not really. <laughs> okay, I'll give a mic to this side. I'll just join you, take it away. Okay, we don't get a microphone. Um, are you fine? Are you hearing Alex in here? <laughs> You know, after the accident, you told me you'd help me. Look at you, you got two legs. I have one leg. I can't help. Well, maybe, I maybe, maybe if you add both your stumps together, you get a full leg. <laughs> I want to but maybe I'll just... Freeze. Uh, just thought I'd join in the scene on the stage. Carry on. <laughs> sir, sir, please, please. We are the world's worst tightrope walkers. <laughs> <laughs> and we could use a, like, so we, would you do a lead our circus? Freeze. Come, let go of Frodo. He doesn't have the ring. Touch the precious. Help me, Samwise, help me. I don't know. I don't like you that all that much, to be honest. Um, <laughs> You're my gardener, at least. I fucking pay you. I want to save your life, you don't. Not, not well enough, to be honest. Kill me. <laughs> okay. Who ate all of that food in the third film? This fucker. <laughs> Did I? You've never seen the film, Star Wars, Gandhi. Of course I've seen the films. Well, you know. Freeze. I'm actually just an octopus on cocaine. Well, that's a very interesting question. Let me Freeze! <laughs> this is the worst camel you have. I have swapped with my wife. Very bad camel. It has. No <laughs> Move! <laughs> Cow. We are a camel cat. Freeze! I told you not to get the super glue near the chickens. I told you! This is what happens, very angry chickens! Vegeta, <laughs> if you 
don't get off, Namek, I'm going to Kamehameha your other testicle. Please. <laughs> How many times do I tell you, stretching your penis would not make your dick bigger? <laughs> <laughs> you have a small dick, face it! He's gay for fuck's sake! Freeze! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a live performance on Two Girls, One Cup. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the cup? I thought I was using this hat. <laughs> oh god, that's hair! Freeze! Unfortunately, due to budget cutbacks, we can no longer afford the hat. Uh, you, I'll have to substitute for the cup because you are cheaper. Do I get paid for it? No. No, no. Uh, yes, well, we'll have to. So we're gonna have one girl, no cup, but look. The recession, the recession. I genuinely feel like I could be a poor dad. So let's get this going. Didn't I see you? Didn't you used to work in a kebab shop? Come on, man, that was before I became this. I think it's part three. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining our sermon today. What sins would you like to confess? <coughs> How long have you got? <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a top three. <laughs> Adulterer is the top third. Oh, with how many? 72. <laughs> All virgins? Okay, okay, just check. One were virgins in heaven. I have to say that. <laughs> Would you like to say it to the folks in life? Mine were virgins in heaven after I suicidally bumped myself because they said 72. <laughs> what was your second one? <laughs> I get drunk every day because the pain of living hurts. I get drunk every day because I can fucking afford to. You're fine. I'm the top one. <laughs> Able to make their own sound effects. 
This will be provided by Harry and Dan. Okay, Dan, you will be providing the sound effects for Paul. Harry will be providing the sound effects for Ian. Okay, so if Paul was to ride a horse and say Ian was to play League of Legends, I don't know. I don't play you. I don't play you. You can get a so, um, so we need to set the scene. So let's have some kind of activity. Not sexual. Not legal. No. <laughs> what? The performers can't take part. Anything, just any kind of activity. Something rigid! Awesome. No, I'm not awesome. Awesome. Okay, so, you two are rioters who are about to uh, torture your own hunt, yeah? Um, Harry and Daniel will be providing the sound effects for your respective performer when they're So, take it away. Alright, let's go burn down that house! Yeah. I've, got, I've got some matches here, but I like one. <laughs> <laughs> Massive match. Right, um, uh, so I light something with it. Yeah, just pick up my jerry can full of petrol. <laughs> yeah, it's plug it in the room. All right. All right. I'll throw it out that corner and then I'll throw the match. Well, that's not going to work. It's made of metal. No, it's not Then maybe uh, open the jerry can. <laughs> Screw! <laughs> Stuck inside. <laughs> it's liberating. I'm gonna 
open this door and have a look. Is it Calvin? Okay, alright, here's the door. I'm gonna open it. It looks really old, so it's probably gonna make a big Wait, wait, you see that tortoise growing? <laughs> Majestic creature. a very boring scene and when things get just a little bit too dangerous um, they're going to call in their stunt double. <coughs> I'm Guy's stunt double and Umbi is in stunt double and we have to look, what, um, make whatever boring task they may be doing look as exciting and dangerous as possible. So can we have like a boring hobby? Oh, um, what? Bowls. Bowls. Knitting. Knitting, yeah. Okay, alright, we your two elderly women knitting. Okay. Remember guys, if things get a little bit too dangerous in the knitting room, don't forget to call in your stomach bubbles, me and Andy. Hello Doris, how's your knitting going? Not good. Oh, I'll, uh, I'll start knitting right now by putting this cube through a hole. Stop double. <laughs> I'm now going to attempt my most dangerous stunt to date. They say that the rich can only get into heaven by fitting a couple of yard needle. Well, what about fitting a needle through wool? <laughs> One. <laughs> Two.
Oh, okay. <laughs> right, well, the, uh, the next game that we're going to play is Puppet. It's a... Uh, come on, come on, come to you. Um, this is going to be a game involving me and Nathan and two of you. So, can we have volunteers who don't mind uh, getting all touchy feelings with myself and Nathan? It's only for a short time. Uh, and you, the two eager people in the back who are clearly perfect. Come on up, come on up. This is your life. Um, I'll take the woman, I will take that bullet. <laughs> um, hello, what's your name? Uh, Rihanna. Rihanna? Charles. Rihanna Tom. Uh, Paul. No. So, um, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is we're going to act out a scene, a weekend activity. Someone give us a weekend activity. Dogging. Not dogging! <laughs> doing the shopping. You want to see this? Doing the shopping, I heard doing the shopping. So, when we're going to do the shopping, we cannot move our bodies. We get to do the dialogue, however, our bodies are going to be controlled entirely by Rhiannon, who's got me, and Tom, you've got Nathan. So, we can't, we can't move our arms unless we move our arms. We can't move our legs, don't worry, we don't have to do that, and we don't want to move our legs. If you want to go a bit higher, we can suck me on the ice, I can play. Why not? We've been so long. Remember, we just speak into microphones. Keep the hands near the face. <laughs> Um, so, we've got our weekend activity, which is shopping, we've got our uh, puppet masters here, so without any further ado, please put us into a position and we will uh, begin the scene. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. Ready. <laughs> Nathan, you can... Nathan, you can... Okay, then you're ready. Nathan, ready. Okay. Am I ready? Puppet Master, am I ready? Okay, Nathan, begin the scene. Hello, dear. You wanted to go shopping for the weekend? <laughs> oh, can't you see? I'm already... Co Thank you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> it's been so long since I've seen your face. Can't you see? Oh, I'm already... I'm, I'm, I'm an overly side, 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 side. Yes, yeah, exactly. I can see the other shop assistant behind you gearing up for a good old-fashioned shopping. Now, are you ready, dear? Because I heard shopping can be quite dangerous if we don't ever not properly prepared. I know. I feel like, ooh, I'm not scared to answer. Yes, yes, we must, we must. That's okay. Now, dear, dear, as much as I love you, you do need to go and have a trolley. I do, and personal space. I like yes, personal yes. space. I will keep touching you, however, just to make sure I don't lose you again. Well, I could have sworn the trolley comes to a lower than they used to. Oh, they got lower than they used to. Oh, I feel faint. I feel faint. <laughs> Where are you? I'm behind. I'm behind. Oh, you do look faint. Oh, God, I feel so good. I should catch you. Yes, you should. Oh. <laughs> You're much heavier than you used to be. Have you got a weight? Fuck you. <laughs> I won't fall, I won't fall. <laughs> stand up right dear, there you go, stand up. Okay, uh, dear, dear, yes. I think the first thing we're going to need is some uh, Weetabix. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, there it is, I see Weetabix, oh, oh there. I'm grabbing, I'm reaching for it, I just... Well, who are reach first, I've not got it. Oh no, you bastard, you're going to uh, go the Into the trolley, you bitch. Oh, <laughs> you are going to pay for that. That's how much I Oh no, no, dear, dear, please, let's stop fighting, let's stop with the fighting. Why, it's what we do best. Let's just high five, get, ah, no, my chest. Ah, oh, I'm currently rubbing my nipples. <laughs> you have big nipples and a tiny chest. Dear, please, I just want to make I think. I just want to make up. Ow! Okay? I just want to... I just want to well, stroke you. me in the eye. I just want to stroke you. Beautiful. Oh, no! Abuse! Why, dear? Why? Uh, your finger was in my ear. I married you all those years ago because you said you were a sensitive female. And... I'm, uh, a, I'm a woman. <laughs> I always thought I was a man. Uh, well, then if you just check yourself very quickly, I feel faint again. Oh. See, I told you. <laughs> dear, dear, I have a solution that will solve all our problems. What is it? Where, where are you? I think we need to re oh, I think we need to rekindle our love by reenacting how we first met. Remember how all those years ago you called me in the dirty dancing uh, joke that everyone loved? <laughs> Yes. I think we should reenact that, and also I want a teapot. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to get into position, you get into position too. Yeah, I'll turn backwards a bit. We're going to do this, dear, we're going to make this happen, okay? I'm going to uh, just get... I just want to go back to go back a tiny bit more than this. Gonna... Oh, I have the power! <laughs> I need to get my arms ready to catch you. Okay. Uh, I'm I read... How the hell am I going to catch you like this? I know. <laughs> Well, 
put the arms around you first. Okay, I'll put my arms around you. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> it's a turkey bastard. She slapped me on the arm. <laughs> We haven't put you up too much. Uh, so just grab some drinks at the bar. We'll be back again in about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, at the end of the break, uh, we're going to play a game which will involve three of you and will involve me, Umbi, and Paul getting our legs waxed. So, um, <laughs> uh, try and stay away as long as possible. Uh, so it's to happen. Uh, we can end the show time. Volunteered. However, they're not going to be on their own. They will have. They will be represented in the quiz by one, by four, technically three of you. Would anyone like to volunteer for this, or I will have to come. Oh, I see a volunteer already. I see two volunteers. Oh, we have three volunteers. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to overwhelm. You start all your hand shots straight away. Come on. Jamie. Oh, good old Jamie. Kerry. Who else was on the next one? Kerry. Hannah. 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 <laughs> well, I was going to get them all up. I was going to get you all up, and then they answer a question with your trousers on. <laughs> it gets better and better, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, well they're, they're going to remove their trousers. Quite a normal thing for Zia. <laughs> Whilst we quiz our three analysts, analysts are the word we have to use. Basically, what's going to? Oh. How this works, I probably should have mentioned this earlier. I will ask each of them a general knowledge question. If they get the answer right, then their person will be saved. And then, saved. And then, so for example, if Kerry gets her question right, she can then pick one of the other two to get waxed. At that point, which the corresponding contestant has to wax the leg of their person. However, if Kerry, for example, got it wrong, she now has to wax her own, her own person. Victim. Victim, that's a good one. The questions were written by me. Do you remember all those times I was really, really lovely to you? <laughs> <laughs> and just to point out, there are, no Keep that in mind. there are no Doctor Who questions. As quite a few of you know, I would have done it. 30. We'll see how much, we'll see how much pain you're in. If you more pain, you keep going. Are other two victims, are they trouserless? Shush! Zia, go Right, I I'm going to go out of the way. I own boxes that have one button. I think we're testing. What's better about it? I'm going to keep it. Oh, we better get the wax. Oh, I have a woman. <laughs> Does anyone? That's a good point. Does any of the three contestants know how to? Yeah, you got the middle. Would you mind getting them ready, please? Thank you. Oh, Rachel, um, if you like at any point see one of my balls, can you just sort of? Pull out? <laughs> cool. Uh, we probably should put a warning as well. You may see a test. Okay. Oh, so, pubic hair, hair, balls, sort of hair, and the entire cock. Yeah, so sort of just do that, just jump up, kind of do what you want, okay? Thank you. Right, have we got any of the strips getting ready? I have never been more aware of how much hair there is on my leg. <laughs> Soon there won't be. Right. I was rich, this was the first time I'd seen you like this. Let's not go in that story. 
So well, should we start with what were the strips getting ready? Ready? Okay, well, uh, well we'll stick with you first, because you've got the strip ready. Question one. What is the name of the paranoid android in Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Marvel. Correct. Which one, of the, uh, which one of the other two would you like to see waxed? <laughs> <laughs> and which contestant do you have? I didn't call you a con earlier. <laughs> School one for racism. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this, are you, Jamie, do you have Z? I think you I think you've got Z if it's just standing there. So uh, Jamie gets to wax it. Yeah, so if you get yeah, if you get it wrong, you've saved it. The end of the game is to save your person. Oh this is a good omen. Let everybody see this. If you can't, I suggest you try and make stand up. Make sure you get a zoom in on this. This is going to be hilarious. It's a spot you like on his leg. It doesn't have to be pretty. It's not all this. Hang on. I think we should maybe do a countdown before we put it off. Ten. Ten. Nine. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. I think he just died on it inside. Keep calm. Right, uh, I think we should go to the other league now. So, Kerry, you get question two. In Monopoly, the green set consists of Bond Street, Regent Street, and which other London street? Oxford Street. That is correct. Which one of the other, which one of yes! the other? Umby or the Oh, you got it! What a surprise! Come on, Jamie, you have to go street now. I think they're actually going to be a lane. It's mad at me. It's a bad day to be brown. He's distracted, he and Jamie's been distracted by question three. After how many years would you celebrate your crystal anniversary, Jamie? How many years would you celebrate your crystal? Have you been looking at my paper? Oh, then you got it right. Which then means you have to pick one of the other two. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not putting my finger on it, see if it's a sticky one. Right, so. Uh, Shut up! The other two should get waxed. Paul it is. Can we get Paul ready, please? Right. We'll, we'll go for a shorter countdown of three, two, one. So three, two, one. <laughs> Thank you for nearly face planting me with ears like her. <laughs> no, nothing. Well, yeah, get on really well. Yeah, yeah. Let me really thorough. We have taken a layer of your skin off, apparently. <laughs> I hope you want to give generously for this. Right, Kerry, are you ready? Three, two, one. Nice. That wasn't that bad. <laughs> Real man. I love how I'm smooth for you now. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm going to question four. After how many years would you spell that? That's question three. Which sign of the zodiac would you be if your birthday was on the 18th of October? Um, I have no I'm sorry. I knew that! Unfortunately, <laughs> that doesn't matter. You're still getting waxed. Oh, no! Oh, oh the oh, the oh, you have a gentleman's <laughs> daddy's place? What? Yes, they're going! Oh, I'm going to say it. Someone's volunteered to replace you. <laughs> That's even hairier than me. Hey, that is proper hairy. <laughs> <laughs> you see, 
yeah, you really should be the way I feel that. When you touch that, I can't feel that. I actually can't feel that. Are all women like sort of disabled from the waist down because I can't feel their legs? That's, probably That's the same thing all the women you slept with have said to me. <laughs> Wax your legs. No, 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 not back. Trim and, you know, I'll be the hair, okay? That's good to know. We'll use you as another back. Ready? Three, two, one. That sounded more painful. That's a lot of painful. Someone who would wax the word cock into it. Someone's volunteered that. I've already had that. Oh, <laughs> oh another. Okay, Ian, we'll use you now. No, no, Ian's volunteered his chest hair. Ian has a lot of chest hair. No, it's not. Jamie, question five. Who was the first historical non-royal to appear on a UK, UK postage stamp? <laughs> no. Fuck! <laughs> Shakespeare. Sorry, Ian, you're going to be... You know that. No, no, it's not Ian this time. This feels sort of like backstage of a very low-budget porn film. Paul <laughs> Marvin, he's already got pretty much that far. Basically, yes. Give him a boys in the end. Turn around to him. Come on. To make it more suspenseful, I'm not going to give him a countdown. Jamie can rip it off any time he likes. Come on. Jamie, I'll ask another question. We'll come back to you. Yeah, so he can do it whenever he was... Oh, yeah. Kerry. What, which gemstone is associated with the month of May? This... <laughs> fucking do it! Top down. Top down. Top down, Mary. No. Yeah. Emerald. Emerald. I know, I didn't like these questions. Oh, well, you get out of <laughs> No, I'm not going to do one We'll do one more. <laughs> Close enough. Who would you like to? Who would you like to wax? Ooh, ooh. Two of us, Gary. Treat for everyone if that does happen. 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what, 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 uh, what alert? Two. Was it actually two? Fair enough. We make love to make cross your legs. Something doesn't happen very often. <laughs> 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 we should let that one set a bit. Very. I'm having thoughts. What is the capital? What is the capital city of the U.S. state of Texas?
Um, you sir, what happens if you cross at Norwood? You cheated at Norton Crosses. Um, you know you're a student when writer's block comes easier to you as... Um, damn! Um, how come all the best things are red? I mean, there's Red Nose Day, uh, roses, and red tube. <laughs> still sticky up here. I've got a joke, I've got a joke about Chili Savile, but it's a bit childish. <laughs> what does an owl with Tourette say? Twat twoo. Um, what happens if you lock David Cameron in a room with a male chicken? You've got two cocks. Now my final joke. Um, there was a girl near college called Backwards Lana. Guess what she liked to do with her boyfriend? I'll give you a minute for that one. Right, and now back over to Nathan, Nathan Wilkin. Cheers, mate. I'm going to avoid Ian and Zia's sticky patch. I have to take this on with me, I've got a really bad memory. Oh, thank you. So nice. Heckled by my own friends. Anyway, recently I decided it was time for me to finally get fit. Well, I mean, look at the size of me. So I thought I'd actually, I'd actually do it this time, after years of procrastinating and saying, yeah, I'm fine. Um, well, I decided, well, instead of exercise, I just do the diet and it's so much easier. Then I, find, I think I found a diet plan that works. It's basically following the food at the portion size advice on that little wheel that no one ever pays attention to. So I mean, I, I, I followed that, and for, I know the last couple of months, I mean, I've lost about 40 pounds so far, and that's not having to do any exercise whatsoever. Suits me down to the ground. God, I've got my glasses. Bear with me. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, now I can see. Wonderful. So yeah, so that's all. now, ever since I've lost this weight, my body has felt fantastic, but my mind has, I've been losing it, just because I, my mind's been crying out for me to eat, to eat! Because for some reason my mind and food make me amazing. So I've been denying that, and I'm becoming slowly more like the person you see in front of you. But now, so every time I get the craving of my, my mind yelling eat, I now just pop in the chewing gum. And I found out, the hard way, that chewing gum is a really boring adult version of bubble gum. I found this out on a train, because I was getting some strange looks from other passengers, wondering why, until I suddenly realised I was trying to blow bubbles with chewing gum. And I'd kind of broken one of those unwritten passenger rules that go along like, I had to write them down, the two men. So I had to go with number one, don't make too much noise, which in my case means putting my phone on silent, because my, ring, my text tone is a bit nerdy. Basically, it is a Dalek yelling, Would you care for some tea? <laughs> and when that goes off in a very quiet carriage, I mean, they're literally all the noise just dry, dies. Literally, everyone's just kind of mumbling, literally just silence. And they all look for the person who pulls out their phone. <laughs> Rule two, take up as little space as possible. That's fine for normally proportioned people. For my height, I've got ridiculously short legs and a ridiculously long torso. So when I sit down anywhere, my head is, is literally just starts above all the headrests. So literally on a train, you just see my floating head. <laughs> and because I'm quite broad-shouldered, I have to, I take about a C and a half, which means that I end up looking like a weird fetal positioned, uncomfortable commuter, like this. Which doesn't help the scare to be honest. Three. If anyone asks for help navigating along the line, lie and tell them to get off at a junction station where they catch their train and avoid their betrayal gaze as the train leaves the station. <laughs> that only happened once. Twice. Four. If you're listening to loud music on your iPod, iPhone, or through your headphones, the chances are, out, chances are that people around you can hear you they hate the music you listen to, and by extension, hate you yourself. However, this rule is null and void if there are noisy children in the carriage, and then everyone is grateful that they can hear your music. I don't see anyone complaining about ABBA anymore. Five. This one's really just for ladies and, and in winter. If you're pregnant, ladies, 
and you want to sit down, make some sort of loud comment about how pregnant you are. Because in winter, when you all wear thick coats, I struggle to tell the difference. <laughs> and literally, pregnant women can be very angry, <laughs> and injuries occur. Six. This is one of my favourites. Don't hug the pole if you're having to stand on the train. Man up, hold it with one hand, imagine I'm holding it with one hand, and literally try and balance yourself without falling or kicking anyone, because again, people don't like that. You can see why I'm not allowed on trains really anymore. Seven, the only acceptable public display of affection, couples, is resting your head on the shoulder of your partner. Anything else, and you need to get a room. However, if you're very drunk, then there's a good chance you're entertaining everyone in the entire carriage. There's a few people I've seen who've done that before. It's you with a bag. Eight. This is very neat. Second to last one. I'll go in a minute. If the train is full, don't attempt to jump and push your way on, because the people who are like me will push you straight back off again. And nine. The last one. If anyone next to you falls asleep on you, wake them up in a gentle manner, so they don't panic and hit you. <laughs> like my sister did on the train from Nottingham when she dozed off on my shoulder. She's really got a good swing. So yeah, uh, my advice to you is to gentlemen, just let them, if it's a stranger, let them sleep on you. And when they wake up and realize they've missed their stop, you can then give them that look, you can give them a look of smug satisfaction. <laughs> anyway, that's enough of me. Uh, I think there's someone after me, but I can't. It's Saeed. Fantastic. Come on. Yeah. 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 Before I actually start talking, I had a few problems with life I'd like to share with everyone. Uh, do you ever think that hiccups are just lost farts? Uh, do you ever hate having to explain to your white friends that a visa isn't just a type of credit card? Do you ever try to explain to your grandparents that phone connections have improved, they don't have to shout at you in sky? Hello, Sayed! How are you? <laughs> do you, uh, gentlemen, and maybe ladies, let's not be sexist, do you ever grow a mustache and realize that you can't talk to children anymore? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I love stereotypes. I, I, I think they're not really offensive at all. They're awesome. In fact, all my black bros out there are proud of the fact that they know they chicken and like big white ass. And not any white ass, big white ass. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a black in right now. <laughs> and all my Asian friends are proud of the fact that when you Google Asian in photos, you get some really passionate pornography with censored vitals. They're proud of that. I mean, uh, I'm, 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 I'm proud of my stereotype. I mean, uh, I try my best to wear a three-piece suit like a normal Persian, be self-centered and really handsome, and smell of cologne and kebab if you smell <laughs> And kebab. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you, and I'm not gonna say any more black stuff because white people always get offended for some reason. Uh, so I'm gonna go into Arabs and Indians because no one likes them. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> An Arab and an Indian. I mean, an Arab guy was riding his camel, the Indian was riding his elephant, how stereotypical. And they're running to each other in the 99p store, as expected. And then the Indian says, Da, da, da. Your dad has a boob on his back. And the Arab says, Habibi, your dad has a dick on his face. You know, it's an elephant. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was raised up in this super Persian environment. My house is just like Persian carpets everywhere, you know? You walk in, the floor, the roof, the fridge. I have a mini Persian mouse pad, you know? Uh, but the problem with Persian rocks is that you cannot walk in them because they're expensive. So my mom bought another rock, placed it on top of the Persian rock. Fantastic! That's what she does. Ah, uh, my mom is crazy, huh? Hey, hey, mom, yeah, yeah, tonight I have a show. I'm doing stand-up. What? You became a canal? You like everybody to laugh like at you? Show them your fucking report card! <laughs> Mom is crazy. Ah. She be making food? Ah, it's not. Food is ready! Mom 
them calm down. I'm sitting next to you in the sofa. <laughs> Force me to do shit. My, my, I'm so Persian that when I, when I went to school, right, I didn't want this. I wanted to be a normal kid. But it was so hard to fit in. All these kids had these beautiful lunch bags with Spider-Man, Batman, cool shit. I had a 99p store bag. 99p store. And then we had them like ham, sausage roll. I'd be having coffee kebab with extra onion. My food be stinking up the place and shit. All the other kids would be like, what the hell is this guy eating? I'd be taking a nap because, you know, I just had some kebab. <laughs> Eventually, I made white friends. I made English friends, I made black friends. Asian friends, or white friends are really interesting. I mean, what happened before I came here? I assumed this, I had this image, I'll be coming here, you'll be full of blonde chicks. So the first English words I learned was, hey, who are you? You look beautiful today, you know, it comes in handy. But when I told my English friends, hey, I'm bilingual, I speak another language, like, that's great, man. Oh, we like to learn a few Persian words. I can't do it white, but I'm really sorry. So they would be saying, so how do you say, I fucked your mom. In the anus. <laughs> That's a really practical sentence in Iran. You don't want to say that. I dare you. <laughs> yeah. White people. I'm going to do this white voice as a black voice because I can't do white voice. Just go with it. White people love to see innuendos in things. Uh, I realize with all my white friends, I'll be hungry. But, hey man, uh, let's go get some milkshake. I see what you did there. Let's go get some milkshake. No, literally, let's go to McDonald's and get milkshake. Is that a new place you get your milkshake from, bro? Yeah, man! No, no, the literal milkshake. Oh, oh, but God, you know, I was thinking of chocolate or vanilla. Yeah, man, I see what you did, I like my caramel! <laughs> uh, apart from milkshake, I really, really enjoy shisha. Well, because at shisha places, you get advice on girls from all Persian men, and I suck with chicks. Lost that doesn't happen, it's not her. <laughs> this old Persian guy, he is a retired flight attendant. He was a flight attendant for the pure purpose of banging other flight attendants. Genius guy, sits down, giving me advice on girls. Son, girlfriends are like farts. The sooner you let them go, the sooner your mind is at ease. I'm not really intrigued by this guy's theories. Tell me more. If you keep them in, in too long, they turn into diarrhea and make a mess in your pants. <laughs> really? Look at this shisha. I spent five minutes on it. I enjoyed it for three hours. I spent three hours on it again. I can't even enjoy it for five minutes. I she makes a mess in my pants. Yeah, that's a problem with chicks. But I didn't listen to that guy. Of course not. I'm going to go out there and pursue a woman. Just like any other man. So to do that, I had to go to clubs and bars, just like normal people. And the problem with clubs is that I might actually meet the mother of my children dancing to Rack City Bitch, Rack, Rack City Bitch, Rack. <laughs> Isn't that a marvelous song, by the way? Really good song. Uh, actually, be an awesome song to the uh, So um, I go to a club. I want to dance with this beautiful girl I just saw. She looks great. She's dancing with her friends. So I try to approach her and dance. It's <laughs> That's how I dance, okay? Don't laugh. And this is what she does. <laughs> then she takes a picture of me, puts it on Facebook. Now, the amount of times this has happened like 62 times. So if they have a facial recognition in Facebook, they'd be thinking I'm a player, but really, I'm a clown. Mom was right. I suck. So, uh, I tried to use the fact that I'm Persian to meet chicks. And it didn't really work. That's what I was like. Hey baby, you look like my third wife. That was not impressive, but like, it wasn't. See, being Middle Eastern, unlike with any other foreigner, has its good stuff, but it has more disadvantages. It's got so much politics to it. I fucking hate politics. I hate politicians. They really fucking suck. What dumb motherfucker decided to troll everyone and do some terrorist shit? Now you're gonna make a war. And it took 10 years to catch the guy. Give me 30 minutes, I would have brought Bin Laden here. I'll just use some Middle Eastern trickery. Go inside a taxi in Middle East. So, uh, brother, uh, do you know this guy, my friend? I can't find his home. Uh, he's got Bin Laden. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I know Bin Laden. He owns Halal Porn Shop. 
Yes, 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 he, he failed, he failed that business, so he went over and uh, he opened this chicken shop, it's called Ken's, it's all over the place. You know? <laughs> I mean, the taxi guy would have probably took the long route because he's a foreign taxi driver. He wants to charge you more. But he would eventually get you there. I'm talking to you, Echo Cars. <laughs> yeah, uh, I forgot my stuff back. Okay, uh, the reason I sat here and just talked about being a foreigner, being Persian, is because the media gives such bad image of. A Persian or a Middle Eastern guy, they never show this handsome, awesome dude doing stand-up, wearing a three-piece suit. I'm talking about myself, guys. <laughs> they always show, they either show keeping up with the Kardashians, which is terrible, or they show the death to America guy, the guy who's burning the American flag and saying, death to America! But they don't show the part when he says, not MJ, we love MJ! Beat it! Beat it. <laughs> they don't show that part, now. <laughs> So we just love to give a different image of people from the Middle East. As we say, yes, in my country, blah, blah, blah. Which leads to a lot of bullshit. I mean, as a Persian, you, you, I, I did this a lot, a lot of times. Okay, I've been saying, back in Iran, I had a threesome with the winner of Miss Iran and Iran's next top mother. Believe me, good at it. No one can Google shit in prayer, Joe. No one, there is no Google there. Don't no, believe me, Google at it. Back in Iran, one time Nicole Kidman was a tourist, I gave it to her. Elizabeth Taylor too. Why didn't she there? <laughs> that was meant to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I just want to end this bit with a story of these two foreigners at a farm in the UK. And we like to show off to each other as well about uh, being a foreigner. This is an Iraqi farmer. <laughs> He's making cucumbers. It's like, Habibi, to the Persian guy. Back in Ara, when we make cucumber, it's not like shitty cucumber. You water it once, it grows three meter. Water it twice, twelve meter. Three times fifty. Persian guys like, back in Iran, we're too cheap to water cucumber. But if you water it once, it goes twenty meter. Water it three times, it breaks the fucking border of the country. Water it one more time, it goes all the way to Iran to her sister's house. Should I water it more? She would probably go to the sister's house, and if you water it more, it would rip this. Come on! It was funny last time, people laughed. Yeah, I'm just gonna end my bit uh, with this message of love and peace. Uh, life is too short to be spent with head, and the hearts are warmer than to deserve to be broken. Tomorrow's sunrise will shine through our dark night, even if we're not together. So please help. Pay my rent. <laughs>
I don't know how I got in there, I'm sorry, but you know, I guess the point is that there is other stuff to do in the world of gaming. Um, but hopefully in this uh, third slide I can sort of show you exactly the advantages of what game. <laughs> now one of the things that many people experience while gaming is that they forget how to do the 69 position correctly. <laughs> uh, obviously uh, you're meant to be facing each other. Uh, you're certainly not meant to have that look on your face. Um, you are meant to have that look on your face, but there's no form of... Oh, no, yeah, there's... Yeah, definitely. You can meditate while you game. Uh, I mean, you know, I don't know quite how that works. I mean, if you um, got the pause menu up, you can <coughs> meditate and that will give you time to rest and recover from all the shooting and the action in Call of Duty. And... You could be an actor in a slideshow. <laughs> so let's move on to our final slide. Um, I still really haven't got onto the exact point of this entire lecture. Um, hopefully, I can really give you an insight into the world of video gaming and, and show you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I want to turn around and make this slide, but... Uh, <laughs> coming soon to an HMV, Human Centipede the Video Game. <laughs> Only for PS3 and Xbox. Thank you for listening to this lecture. Good night. <laughs>
Well, I was hearing about my tooth. Yeah. You, you informed me that in a drunken state, I've got cock in my mouth, because in a whorehouse, I basically was a man whore, and now you're telling me to fuck a hairy bald man. We think that you could try and find job <laughs> as one of our staff. Sexy. I might try find job as your good English grammar teacher. How dare you, sir? Our employees think that our service is top notch. Well, I can't remember it, but apparently they got a, apparently they got a very good service in the mouth last night. Can you do anything about the pain and the money I'm seeing? Okay, and try this. <laughs> try what? Pointing that way. I'm not sure how that's going to help. Turn Johnny. <laughs> and normally they go on and they go. And when on that note. <laughs> Okay, we've got one last game and this involves all of our performers, so if you all gather on stage. Right, now, this game is called A Day in the Life of. What's going to happen here is all of our performers are going to act out the life of one of you. So, ah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's got to be someone who clearly doesn't want to do it. We know too much about Janine, though. Anyone in my presence? Someone who's hiding. This is the gentleman here. With the long hair and the long hair. Yeah, you know him. No, it's someone you have no idea about. Someone hiding. Go to the back. Yeah, good <laughs> oh, I know. I'm one of the four people at the back over there. I love it with you, actually. You're kind of hiding. There we go. That's the exact reaction. Here we go. You don't have to get up. You don't have to get up. So, what is your name? Uh, what do you do for a living? Cool. It's different. Uh, what do you study? Film production. Cool. Okay. Um, what's your favourite hobby? <laughs> this is going to be extremely controversial. Uh, okay. Uh, what's the personality of your best friend? Uh, uh, they're a bit of a twat, or? Do you have any occupation other than that? Okay, alright, okay, alright, right. Sorry, Karis, right? Karis, okay. <laughs> okay, um, we're gonna, um, I'm a day in the life of Karis. What's that? Karis. Karis. Amber, um, as you're the only Paris. girl from Karis. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. I was thinking of Karis. Um, as you're the only female performer would be the logical solution to uh, make you Harris. Okay, um, so if um, Paul, you can be Keris's lesbian friend. <laughs> you were hoping it'd be me, wouldn't you? I mean, could you do television production, don't you? Okay. Yeah, so you could be um, a fellow student. Wait, um, isn't here, is she? Oh, no. I'm really sorry. Please, please don't take any effects for anything you might see. This is what we do. Um, okay. Uh, we uh, we're some more television students. Guy, Alex, students. 
Um, okay, right. And, okay, so you three work at the bar that Keris used to work at. Um, okay, so if we start with Keris's day, so Keris is with her best friend going to the lecture. Sorry, uh, Keris's best friend, can I ask your name please? Jade. Is there? Jade. Cool. Okay, so if all um, if the, if, um, the students and bartenders stay out of the scene for now, um, so it's morning. Keris and Jade are getting ready for the lecture. I'm sorry in advance. <laughs> Take it away. I'm sorry. Let's you do something. Just the clock. <laughs>
Okay, okay. That's enough of um, Keris in the lecture. Uh, move on to Keris' evening. Um, we are at the bar. Uh, Who's that? Um, might as well bring Jay back into it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we'd go to bars together. Uh, we can't go to the Okay, um... Okay. Okay, Nathan, you're the bartender who... Do you mind me asking how come you don't work them anymore? You moved away. Oh, okay. Oh, that really does cover up. Okay. So, okay. Keris and Jade are taking a trip back to where Keris used to live, um, and you thought you'd stop in on your old workplace. Um, but Nathan, the bartender. Why? Which friends? You know, you go do things together, and you've got Sai and Ian who are just dancers. <laughs> Or just drinkers. Where is this place? Where is this place? Where is this place? Where is this place? It's not hard. 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 It's not we're just best friends here, there's nothing of it, yeah? <laughs> so sorry. Okay, uh, what, so seriously, what can we get? Lager. You would like a lager? Bitter. <laughs> okay, lager to cry out. For you, madam? Don't look at her tits. <laughs> at my tits. <laughs> we told you, hands off. Can't touch my tits either. This is why no she... cock near my tits. This is why she left. I know it's big, but you can't even spit in your pants, not that big. Here, was your picture? Cheers. You're welcome, It's been so long, I've had a crazy time you've had here. Who the fuck is this? Excuse me, you're not best friends. Do you know my sexuality? Headbutt the teeth out of your head. What happens to my bar stays in the bar. Yeah. What am I saying? Who is she? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Uh, you're cool, you're cool. Oh, I'm allowed to be friends with gay guys. So well, it is HP, I mean, you know. You just cool. can't get up at all, right? Straight guys, I don't get away. <laughs> but it's all right because these two are absolute lovers. So, as Keris used to, as Keris well knew, but did not decide to tell us. <laughs> you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Oh, look, they're kissing. Full on on the lips. <laughs> With everyone watching them. The microphone, the one with the wax on it. Uh, oh, not the leg cap. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's the biggest show we've ever done. That's an end. Can I hear an aww? Oh, you don't need me. You don't need me. You don't need me. You don't need me. Actually, I'll just ask, was that anything like a day in the life? He was like exactly the same. <laughs> I thought so. And Jade, are you anything like that? Right, I thought so. Honestly. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's still a bit short. Yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, I'd like to let you know we raised nearly £150 uh, for charity. Uh, thank you so much. Cuts. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. You know the anyway, uh, um, we have another round of applause for our performers. Uh, uh, I honestly don't know how to end this because usually what I do Get is. Get your <laughs> My balls are not. Okay. Um, usually what I do is I say uh, we've got a big show coming up, but that was it. That was our big show. Um, we we'll probably have one more next term, it'll probably be in a smaller venue. Um, 
It's just an ages to prepare. Uh, and most of the other people pulled out. Uh, but thank you so much for coming. Uh, we actually have an audience this time, so without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So thank you very much. Uh, have an awesome night, and see you next time.